Kevin, payback is this weekend. I feel like we just had this big all-in show. There's plenty going on. I feel like SummerSlam was like three days ago, it feels like. I feel like we were just sitting here doing our SummerSlam reaction. But now we're here for payback. We're going to do a preview, a bit of a lead heat extra for you great listeners. So shout out for everyone listening to this now. Kevin, how are you doing? I'm good, pal. All Out is this weekend too. All Out is Sunday. Payback is Saturday. We had All In last weekend. We had SummerSlam three weeks ago. We've done like 1,700 episodes this this month alone. Man, uh, do you have a little fatigue? How are you feeling? I mean, I feel pretty good. I enjoy doing this. I don't feel fatigue, um, which is good. Uh, but I can understand for some podcasts out there who do three, four-hour shows every night or after every show, <laughs> I can understand there'd be a bit of burnout. But with us, as you know, Kevin, as we always say, we give you guys what you need to hear. We're going to be in and out of this in about maybe 20, 30-ish minutes. To the point, payback, no BS, pal. So, Kevin, unless there's anything else you want to say here. Well, I, I'm ready to spoil the review for or the preview for everyone. You don't even have to listen yeah. to the rest of this. I'm going to summarize this show in about 10 words or so. WWE Payback 2023 is essentially the matches that got left off the SummerSlam card. Like that, That's literally all this is. And then, and on top of that, you got Seth Rollins and Nakamura. Uh, aside from that match, I'm gonna run through the five matches on here. Becky mm-hmm. versus Trish, who wasn't yeah. good enough to be on SummerSlam, or as Triple H put it, they, they didn't have time. But you went over how they could have shaved an hour off the show and got Becky and Trish <laughs> on the show and still had a three hour and 15 minute show with them wrestling. I digress. Rhea Ripley and Raquel Rodriguez, not big enough for SummerSlam. On payback, Rey Mysterio defending his U.S. title versus Austin Theory. It would have been an embarrassment to have Austin Theory as the champion on the SummerSlam card after being buried, after beating John Cena clean. Uh, L.A. Knight versus The Miz. Uh, these guys were in a battle royal on SummerSlam. I-, I think I pitched it when we were previewing SummerSlam or reviewing it or something, that they could have had L.A. Knight versus The Miz on SummerSlam. But no, uh, not big enough for uh, SummerSlam. Hopefully LA Knight would be big enough for SummerSlam 2024, or WrestleMania, or Backlash, or some of the other pay-per-view cards that he was left off of. I digress. The Tag Team Champions, left off of SummerSlam. Here they are in a Steel City street fight. So there you have it, pal. This is the SummerSlam Rejects, and Seth Rollins versus Nakamura, and Nakamura wants to destroy Seth Rollins' back. I don't know what happened to Nakamura ever since Triple H became in charge, now he's obsessed with Seth Rollins' back. I I don't know what kind of character arc this is. Um... I don't know. I have some things I want to say that I'm not going to say, and I'm just going to stop this here, and I'm going to end my uh, my rant. And now you go ahead, pal. I like that you do make that point. I mean, because I mean, in fairness, that's usually what a payback or a backlash generally is. It's sort of just like a fallout follow up to SummerSlam. In this case, though, as we discussed, SummerSlam, Kevin, these matches, Becky Lynch versus Trish Stratus, is happening on this show and not at SummerSlam, because Roman Reigns and Jey Uso had to go 36 minutes and 58 minutes plus entrances. So that's why we're getting this here. Uh, will the match itself be good? I mean, as is the case with these shows, matches always usually end up being good. We shouldn't really need to justify that. We're not saying the match is going to suck. We're saying the matches, you know, the timing of them because of how long SummerSlam went. Now they're happening here. So it's what it is. Kevin, it's a payback. Um, let's be real here. We're not expecting this to be... WrestleMania 17, or expecting this to be th- whatever the next all in or AEW pay per view is, because every AEW pay per view is apparently nearly perfect. Apparently, um, we're expecting this to be a what three ish hour good show, some good matches. Um, I think the fact that this event's being held in I mean, Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, Kevin, look, this isn't Puerto Rico, this isn't Montreal. This isn't deep in the guts of Riyadh, Yedda, Saudi Arabia. This isn't the UK for money in the bank in front of a stadium. Kevin, I mean, I'll ask you, you're, you're the American native here. When, when you see a show that's taking place in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania, are you just like, yeah, pal, that's going to be a raucous environment? Or are you just like, eh, because of this? Well, as an American, I associate Pittsburgh with the Steelers, the NFL team. And they're one of the most iconic franchises in NFL history. You know, and we've had Wiz Khalifa and Mac Miller and some other great celebrities come from Pittsburgh. So Pittsburgh is generally a a, a pretty good city for me, good spirits, you know. It's not much of a wrestling town, though. Uh, that, that would be the thing, I would say. I, I think Mick Foley came from Pittsburgh and Shane Douglas, I believe, got their starts in Pittsburgh. 
Other than that, not too sure of any other guys. But yeah. uh, nevertheless, um, it, yeah, what you're trying to say is that this is not going to be um, like a Money in the Bank 2023 type crowd. And, and I wouldn't expect that from Pittsburgh. I mean, we saw what Detroit did. Detroit got SummerSlam, and they underwhelmed for half that show. And now I don't blame them. Triple H did force them to watch Shayna Baszler and Ronda Rousey against their will. And that, that killed the whole crowd. But here we have a nice six-match card. I think this has potential to be a pretty good show, honestly. Like, I, I think all the matches have been pretty well built. Some of them have been kind of built up for a long time. Becky and Trish in particular. I think it's like three months now that they've been building that matchup. And they're finally going to pay it off. I, I assume this will be the payoff match. I, I guess we can start there. But let, yeah. Let's start with Becky versus Trish. Uh, the build-up, I, I think... It's been pretty solid overall. Uh, I think the addition of Zoe Stark has kind of kept things fresh. We've seen them wrestle before. They wrestled once on pay-per-view. I think it was Night of Champions they wrestled. And then uh, they wasn't... No, yeah. They wrestled Night of Champions and they wrestled... They were in the Money in the Bank ladder match together. Yeah. And then they had like a couple Raw matches that ended in like a count out. And then you had Zoe Stark interfere and... Um, in the go home for payback on Raw, we saw you know Becky with the uh, get the upper hand on on Zoe Stark and Trish. They do the big Bray Wyatt tribute thing, uh, which was nice. Uh, these two are gonna have a cage match. That's to keep the interference out. Keep one on one, pal. I think it makes sense to have a cage match in the Steel City. I'm down for it. I think it's gonna be a pretty good match. What are you thinking? I mean, I agree. I think that's a cool little little thing they're doing. Um, Steel cage match in the Steel City, pal. I think the build's been, I mean, you say it's been solid, it's been fine, it's been done. I mean, I'm on a similar page. Like, it hasn't been a build that's jumped out at me per se. It's not one that I'm, you know, tuning into Raw or desperately watching the clips to see. But it hasn't been one I'm just like, oh, get that off my screen. So, I mean, they've done a decent job extending this out, what, three months? I mean, because this isn't something that started last week. This, this isn't Nakamura kicking Rollins in the back, pal. This is something that's gone for a few months. They've added Zoe Stark in to keep it fresh, as you say. I think it should be good. I, I think they're still going to do a, a good job in, in a steel cage. I, I think that's going to be interesting how they use the cage because every cage match is different. Um, some of them you've got, you know, high flyers jumping off the cage. Others, it's literally just the story of keeping other people out, keeping interference out. Kevin, this just reminded me, very random flashback. Remember, it was like 2015. They did a steel cage match with Seth Rollins, Becky's husband. And it was like... And he almost died. Kane was guardian of the gate. Do you remember that? Yeah. He said Glenn Jacobs was at the gate, making sure no one else got, got in, pal. Kane's the guardian of the gate, pal. Like, anyway, I don't know. Ridiculous. <laughs> the guardian um, of the gate. That's so stupid. The <laughs> there needs to be a wrestling uncovered video on that when Kane was guardian of the gate. Imagine Bruce Pritchard telling stories on his podcast. Anyway, whatever. The match will be good. I think Becky will win. I just... I agree. Yeah, uh, it's, it's just Becky, pal. I think she'll get the win. Yeah, before um, we go to the next match, I want to say this. I, I was watching the highlights of Raw last night, and I, I, I can't believe, like, I thought it was a joke at first when I first saw it a couple weeks ago. I can't believe Drew McIntyre and Riddle are now a tag team. Like, that that's just the most disgusting, uh, utterly gross piece of content. Like, Drew McIntyre was in a dispute with WWE, he sat at Triple H's office behind closed doors, no cameras, no documentary crew, and no officials, no Bruce Pritchard, just one-on-one, -on -one, the two of them hashing out their creative differences. And McIntyre was like, yeah, I'm going to come back. I'm going to sign a new contract. I'm not going to go to AEW, but I got to be in a tag team with Matt Riddle. Like, I, I just, I find that hard to believe that this is what McIntyre signed on for. That is indefensible. Th th that's one of these things I know I understand. Triple H and the, the WWE brass get praised for everything. I get it. I get that's the thing to do now. But the, what's going on? I don't know. Drew McIntyre, I'm not saying he needs to be running around with Roman Reigns' as championships, main eventing every pay-per-view. But, I mean, a tag team with Riddle. Like, that, that's one of the more insulting things you can be doing on, in WWE, Kevin. Like, that, that's just... Pal, this is Drew McIntyre anyway. We could go long form on that. We'll probably discuss that in a different show. But, yeah, Kevin, Drew McIntyre, eh. Yeah. Have a mighty fallen. Exactly. Let's talk Ray Ripley versus Raquel Rodriguez. Literally the build-up for this, and I watched the promo that Raquel and Dominic cut last night on Raw, or two nights ago on Raw. Literally the build-up. In the promo, Rhea Ripley referenced Raquel Rodriguez's back and her strength. 
Like, she was like, yeah, she has a nice back. She's got good strength. But I'm the face of the women's division in Raw. What does she have? She's a joke. And I'm just like, wow, interesting. That's uh, uh, nice content. Um, th this is the, the face of the women's division. A, a lot of people call her the Batista uh, mm -hmm. to, John, uh, to uh, Bianca Belair's John Cena from 15 years ago. And what she has right now is Raquel Rodriguez and her back. Now, I, I, I do like what they're doing. You know, Ra Raquel Rodriguez is out there, you know, yelling in Spanish, which is great. That's one great thing that I like about the Triple H regime is that he lets people be who they are. You know, we're, we're going to get to that when it comes to Nakamura, about oh. people being who they are um, and more authentic. So I like that part of it. But there's no real incentive here for me to really get invested in this match. Like, realistically, this is going to be, what, like a 12-minute match that goes on second or third on the show. The crowd's going to be hyped for Rhea Ripley. They're going to be booing Dominic out of the building. We'll probably get some Dominic interference. Maybe Raquel will throw him around or something. You know, choke slam or whatever. We get some crazy spot like that, and then Rhea Ripley's gonna win ultimately. And it's not really a slight on Raquel Rodriguez. It's just there's not really enough um, enough high end talent to challenge Rhea Ripley. Like, why isn't Rhea Ripley facing like Becky Lynch? I I, I hope that's where they go next, or Trish or yeah. something. But I mean, they're they're trying with Raquel Rodriguez, and and I applaud them for that. Well, Rhea Ripley, I mean, this is my take on it, Kevin. Feel free to disagree and shoot this down. Rhea Ripley's in the Judgment Day and has been so essential in that group because otherwise she'd be dead in the water irrelevant. You know, again, not, that's, not, that's nothing against Rhea Ripley. That's against the division because there's not, there's not much meat on that bone in the women's division. I mean, obviously, they're keeping Belair and Ripley separate till I assume, next WrestleMania. But then again, apparently, they want to do Belair versus Charlotte, I guess. So I don't know. They're keeping Belair and Ripley separate still uh and as a result Rhea Ripley is having matches like this which I mean the match will be okay probably as long as it doesn't go over like eight minutes long keep this sort of short keep this physical hard hitting Rhea gets the win this doesn't need to be 20 minutes it just doesn't um Rhea Ripley can beat up Raquel's back I guess that that's a theme on this show Triple H must have been hitting back day in the gym being like <laughs> we're gonna have Raquel and Rhea Fuel over the lap spread. Then we're gonna have Shinsuke Nakamura face Rollins because of back as well. Because he kicked him in the back. I don't know. I guess that's what they're doing now. Triple wow. H, the, the theme of pay back. I guess that's good. It's pay back. So they're all having matches about the back. Oh my Get God. it? Yeah, is, is that it? Am oh I cracked man. all of that code, pal? Are they having oh, matches man. of payback about backs because it's payback back? Get it? Back? Wow. Thank you. Know. Thank you for that. Yes. So uh, there's that. Yeah. That's, so, Kevin, there's your analysis. This is what you need to hear as the listener. And honestly, that's probably what the thinking was. That, that was probably one of the creative writers being like, Paul, you know, I think they should feud over the back. Or at least mention it. Even if that's not the central point, mention the back because it's payback, pal. There you go. Uh, so yeah, so Rhea Ripley wins in convincing fashion. I think we're both on the same page there. Mm -hmm. uh, yep. Next up, let's talk about the U.S. title match. Rey Mysterio <laughs> is defending his championship. The legendary, iconic, the cover athlete of WWE 2K22. <laughs> a, a, a recent Hall of Fame inductee. A man who graciously beats his kids on live television. Rey Mysterio Jr., the, the greatest luchador of all time. The most iconic mask in, in a Mexican wrestling history. Oh a, a true mainstream superstar with mainstream and mass appeal. A true legend of this business is facing Austin Theory. Wow. I mean, what a... God, what a downgrade for Rey Mysterio. I, I feel bad for Rey Mysterio, honestly. I really do. Um, Twitter, as we've talked about off-air, wrestling Twitter and the internet wrestling community, they love everything that's going on in wrestling right now. And a byproduct of this is guys like Austin Theory are getting praised for whatever reason. Now, I've seen clips from, like, 2019 NXT, like, I guess, workout videos. I don't even know where people find this shit. It's like <laughs> Austin Theory doing flips and, like, suplexes and monkey, uh, what's that called? Monkey flips. And they're like, oh, Austin Theory, he, he's held back. Triple H needs to take the chains off of him. And he's got a bag. His arsenal is, is creative. Best arsenal in the biz. And I'm just like, is this the same Austin Theory? that I've been oh. watching for, like, four years on the main roster. I don't know. I, I don't see it with the guy. M maybe a, like, a, a generic-looking six-foot-three white guy with muscles is not my type, I guess, uh, uh, for me as a wrestling fan. 
I don't I don't know. He's a he's a call. He's a creator wrestler. That's all he is to me. I, I don't get it. Uh, this match, I mean, it's gonna be good. These two guys are gonna have a nice 12, 13 minute match. The people will be into it. Uh, hopefully Rey Mysterio wins. I, I couldn't stomach if Austin Theory won. I, I don't know how I feel about that. Kevin, what changed? Because when, when I was on Twitter like 10 months ago, a year ago, two years ago, Theory was like one of the biggest, you know, clown on him sort of current wrestlers. Everyone hated him. He was trash. He wasn't good. He had no bag. He and was, he was the muscles. third most overrated wrestler, according to the Wrestling Observer Newsletter readers last year. What changed? Because, I mean, from what I see when I watch the clips and I watch the segments he has on, nothing's, nothing's changed. He's just theory. He has muscles. He cuts promos where he literally sounds like he's reading the script. Like, he just cuts promos. There's no kind of spice there. There's no oomph there. I love your the way you preview this. The, the cover athlete of Dom of Yuri 2K. Yeah. <laughs> that's, that's fantastic. But, yeah, Kevin, I'm willing to say... Obviously, infamously, in our SummerSlam review, I, I had the quote, Corey Graves is garbage. <laughs> I'm willing to put Theory in that same ballpark. So now we've got Corey Graves and Austin Theory in this exclusive club of garbage. Um, I just think, like, what does Theory bring to the table? This is Mason Ryan. This is a muscular white dude who cuts promos, who's reading the script. There's not much zest, charisma to him. He's just a guy, I guess. I don't know. I don't know. I guess when Vince McMahon was writing the show, Theory sucked and was overrated. Now when Theory is literally the exact same thing, it's good because Paul Levesque. I don't know. I Kevin, I, is that it? Am I being cynical here? Is that Because that's literally all that's happened. I don't know. Rey Mysterio should win this match. Rey Mysterio is one of the greatest of all time, pal. Rey Mysterio loves Lucha, pal. Well, not. Yeah, it's great to see Rey Mysterio still wrestling at this age. It's... Yes. Truly remarkable. All right, now. It's remarkable, pal. Let's move on. Yeah, let's talk LA Knight versus The Miz. Yeah. And honestly, I think this match is probably going to be the show stealer. I think this is the one that the crowd is going to be most invested in. I think it's the one that people want to see the most. It certainly had the best buildup for any of the matches on this show. Uh, this feels like... Uh, what's the word I'm looking for here? This is a bit of a warm-up. A bit of a test for LA yeah. Knight. Uh, the Miz is gatekeeping the main event scene right now, and LA Knight has to break through him to get to the next step. You know, it's kind of like an MMA when you've got the young, up and coming fighter. You put him in there against a Riley veteran who never really won a championship, but is just good enough to be like one of the three or four best in the division, but never good enough to be the champion. It's kind of like that type of thing. You know, the Miz is, never, is, is good enough to be like upper mid card his whole career. Not good enough to be a main event guy. So if LA Knight wants to prove himself, he's got to go in there and stand out against The Miz. And I think he's done that. Well, what, what do you think? How are you feeling about this? Oh, no, I agree. I think this, the crowd will be hot for this, and they should be. Uh, they've been they've been given a, a pretty good batch of content to get excited with this match on Raw. I mean, Miz showing up on SmackDown, pal. You know, a, a Raw superstar is on SmackDown. Oh, my God. But, you know, I, I, being serious, I, I think they're going to do a good job. Uh, I think this will be LA Knights. I mean, you, coming up, Hardy, I don't know. He's had some, you know, big uh, money in the bank where he was super over in the UK. And, you know, I, I just hope to see from here, LA Knight have really good performance. He beats The Miz, who's apparently, yeah, the main eventer, even though he was literally dumped in a box in an Alpha Academy mic skit at some, I don't know, I don't know, at Money Man, whatever. Um, I want to see LA Knight win this match. And he carries on the momentum. Maybe they do one more match after that. Miz is just like, he just can't believe LA Knight beat him. He's desperate to just not let LA Knight proceed. And we get another month of Miz cutting like anti-LA Knight promos. LA Knight having to, you know, show he's at the level of being a serious guy who can stand up to, I was like, credible opposition. Just being challenged generally. Called out for being a bit of a, you know, not a one-trick pony, but just like an audience kind of guy. A guy who just works the crowd and see if he's at that level. So, yeah, no, I think it should be good. It should be, I want to say matches at night. I don't think the in-ring side of it will be, like, excellent. But I think from a crowd engagement standpoint, it's going to be quite, you know, the crowd will be into this, and rightfully so. There you go. Now, did you see the business impression of LA Knight on this past Raw? Yes. Well, probably, 
how much credit do I want to give Miz here? One of the best Miz things I've seen in many years. Yeah, honestly. Kevin, you know this better than anyone. We've seen Miz doing some... I mean, we've seen him getting his ACL eaten by zombies. We've seen him doing the worst product promotion we've ever seen as he's being thrown in boxes at pay-per-view events three and a half hours in to promote Mike Seltzer drinks or whatever. I don't know. We've seen some weird stuff, but this Kevin, Miz is dressed up as LA Knight. Funny. I, I, I usually like when wrestlers dress up as other wrestlers. I don't know. something about that. It shows a bit of charisma. Like, if a wrestler is either good enough to be some, have someone dress up as them or impersonate them, they usually have something to them. So that's a good sign to me. But I agree. And I know we poke fun at the Miz using some verbiage in some of his promos, calling himself a main eventer. But in all seriousness, I think this has been a, a good storyline. I think it's been a good yeah. feud. Um, I think the match will be pretty good. You know, the Miz is a, a, as good of a worker, as safe of a worker as there is for the WWE style. And LA Knight, um, you know, we'll see if he can step up to the plate and have a good match here with the Miz. Uh, and, and, I mean, yeah, with some of that verbiage aside, the buildup's been pretty good. Yeah, they've actually gotten, like, a good chunk of Raw time and SmackDown time. It, it's been, like, a, a slow build, a slow burn. Uh, they're really testing the fans' appetite to see if LA Knight is more than just a, a one-hit wonder a flavor of the month. And, and I, I think uh, this has been a good storyline, a good buildup. I think Miz is being pretty generous here with LA Knight and has given him a lot of good TV time and a lot of good segments. And you know, these two guys should do good things. No, 100%. 100%. And I think, Kevin, now we'll move on to this match, which I've seen people say should be match of the night. Pro- probably on paper, it will, have, it will be the best match, maybe. Uh, this, this Steel City Street fight. Is the stipulation they're going with? So Owens and Zayn defending against um, the Judgment Day, pal. Your your boy, our boy, Fergs, Fergie, Devitt, Finn Balor, as well as uh, Damian Priest. So Kevin, I'm just gonna pass this to you. Talk to us about about this. Like, where are you at on this match? Obviously, we have got the tag champions who are still champions. I remember a few months back, everyone's like, they're gonna lose the Usos. They're gonna lose. They have to go to Saudi Arabia. They're like, they're gonna lose the titles. They're still the champions. Five months later. What's your heart this match, pal? Well, I, I think uh, one thing I want to say is that uh, it's interesting the, the involvement of Cody here. Cody's just like, yeah, I'm Sami Zayn and Kevin Owens' boy. Yeah. He's like, I hate the Judgment Day too. Whatever he said uh, uh, during his promo in Montreal. Uh-huh. That's interesting. Um, yeah. Cody got to be somewhere involved. Like, Cody is not going to do like Roman Reigns and sit at home with his newborn baby. You know, if he's not involved in a pay-per-view match... He's going to find a way to get involved somehow, in some way, keep himself relevant, pal. So shout out to Cody Rhodes for that. Now, back to the match itself. Uh, this is clearly going to be a storyline development for Finn Balor and Damian Priest and the the uh, the burgeoning um, explosion of the Judgment Day. Uh, we'll see something here where, like, Damian Priest maybe walks out or Finn Balor walks out or, like, you know, Finn Balor's holding Sami Zayn and Damian Priest goes to punch Sammy, Sammy gets out the way, KOs Finn Balor. You know, we'll yeah. see some sort of friction between those two guys. I, I don't think this is going to be like a balls-to-the-wall type of match. Like, maybe it will be for the first 10, 12 minutes, but then I think it's going to just devolve into interference or, yeah. you know, into stuff like that. We'll see Ray Ripley and Dominic here. Um, for that reason, I don't think this is going to be a match of the night. I mean, yeah. this, it could be if it went balls to the wall and they just had these four guys do what they could do yeah. at their best potential and go crazy for 20 minutes. But I have my doubts that, that, that that's going to be the case. But do you think it's going to be more like Rollins and Balor at SummerSlam where it's like the first bit is going to be them just having the match and then it's just going to become, oh, there's Dom, there's the Money in the Bank briefcase, there's Rhea, pal, oh, Cody's here, oh, there's Rhea again. Oh, the referee is distracted. Now there's a move here. Oh, my God. Priest hit Balor. Oh, my God. Balor's now on the ground, like, angry. Yeah. Oh, the camera's panning on Balor. There's Dom over there. You think it's going to be that, pal? Yeah, that's exactly what I foresee. Yes. I, I was wondering if this would main event, but now that I'm talking about it out loud, I, I think wow. the World Heavyweight yeah. Championship's going to main event. Yeah. And, Kevin, do you want to move on to the, the World Heavyweight Championship? I know. I've got a few things to say. Well, let's say this before we do that. Let's just say uh, predictions. Uh, oh, so, pick-ins. Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn, they're going to keep the championships? Uh, one would assume so. It's hard to picture the Finn Balor and Priest walking out as tag champions, given they're supposed to be beefing. But you never know. We've seen stranger things in wrestling, pal. So. Yeah, I think Zayn and, uh, and Owens will keep the titles. 
And I don't think, just to make it clear, I don't think we set our prediction for LA Knight versus The Miz. I think LA Knight wins clean. Yeah, I'd agree. Yes. Yeah. All right, pal. Main event time. Go ahead. What do you got to say about Seth Rollins versus Shinsuke Nakamura? Yes. So two weeks ago on this podcast, I was openly critical because the first two weeks of this storyline was literally in a Raw match, Nakamura, who we'd barely seen in months, just ran out and kicked Rollins in the back. And then the next week, Rollins is like, you kicked my back, Shin. Let's have a match. So I was I was justifiably critical because that's crap. Anyone, any random indie guy, I could have jumped out of the crowd and kicked Rollins in the back. Like, Kevin, remember when Rollins got attacked by that crazy fan like a year or two ago? That, that could have started, that could have led to a pay-per-view match based on that logic. But wow. this being said, this being said, <laughs> they have actually, you know, developed it, the story. They've done a good job. Credit where it is due. This has been the best work Nakamura's done in five years, bar none. They've actually doing some character development. They're showing him, you know, doing promos in the Japanese style. They have him doing these vignette segments where he's looking like a like a creepo maniac. He's like in, intensely talking about Rollins. Like that stuff's good. That, that's that's the most we've seen from Nakamura in five years. So that's really the main thing here. To me, my is this a hot take? I don't know. We talk about where this pay-per-view is located. It's in Pittsburgh. Okay. If Nakamura's main eventing challenging for the world title, why isn't this in Japan? Make this stand out. Make this feel distinctive. Have payback be that was the show that was in wherever. I don't know. Wherever they held Beast in the East in 2015. In a venue in Japan. Make this stand out more. Because as you say, Kevin, it's a lot of just SummerSlam, I guess, reject matches. This match is... The, the big match. This is Nakamura's first big title match in years. This is the biggest match Nakamura's had really since the Styles matches, I feel like. If someone wants to think of some other matches Nakamura's been in that are bigger, fair play, hats off to you, but it's going to be a big deal. Um, Seth Rollins is really the star of this event. He's the biggest wrestler competing at this show. So they're going to do a big match here, pal. I'll pass you. Before I get to predictions and everything, what are your thoughts, pal? You you are in love with this. You're going to work thinking about Shin versus Rollins. You're going to bed. You're brushing your teeth thinking, damn, three days till we get to see Shin versus Rollins, pal. Can't wait. Oh, this is going to be fantastic. So, pal, what are your thoughts, pal? Wow. Um, yeah, I think that this is um, this has been actually a really intriguing and really good buildup. It's really evolved into that. I love the, the Nakamura vignettes that they've been running with him, like doing karate and boxing training and just like speaking in Japanese about what he wants to do to Seth Rollins back. Now, as weird as that is, and as weird as that sounds, but man, some of the things Nakamura has said, and of course they put the, the English, um, uh, caption subtitles. subtitles. Thank you. We got the English subtitles there. And this past week on raw Nakamura is like, Oh, I want to be the reason why your wife has to help you out of bed. I want to be the reason why you're in a wheelchair your whole life. I want to be the reason why you can't walk with your kids in the park. It's like, man, this is really getting deep and personal. And wow, you know, it's just like, who would have thought? And like I said at the top, this is what happens when wrestlers are allowed to be themselves. Now Nakamura is being himself. Nakamura is being the guy that he was in Japan, the guy that WWE signed, and the guy that he was in NXT. When Vince McMahon got him on the main roster... It's like, okay, now Nakamura has to speak English and cut promos in English, even though English is not a, a good language for him. But he speaks it, but it's not a natural language. We got him out there cutting or having racist promos cut on him by Jinder Mahal. And, you know, he's out there obsessed with AJ Styles' balls. Like, no, like, not, like Nakamura is just being a, a cold-blooded killer and an assassin. He's being the king of strong style, which is what he is. And that's what WWE signed him to be. So I enjoy it. Um, I think this match is going to live up to the hype. I think it's going to be probably the best. I don't even say probably. I, I, I'm i pretty confident when I say this, that this will be the best title defense of Rollins' World Heavyweight Championship title run so far. Um, I, I think the matches that Rollins have had, personally, have underwhelmed. As far as he's been champion. They yeah. Objectively, they have, but yeah, continue. Yeah, this one will be a good match. Uh, Rollins is going to win. I think this will be like a 20, 25 minute match. They're going to have good chemistry, hopefully. And then uh, Rollins will get the win with a curb stop. And then maybe they'll shake hands. 
maybe Nakamura will low blow him or something, and we'll get a second match out of it. But it could go one of two ways. Yeah, I think they're going to extend this program. I think regardless of what they do, this is going to get a match in another month or whenever. Um, whenever WWE want to pull the trigger on another match, I think they're going to do it. Uh, I agree with you. Rollins will win. I don't see Nakamura. Like, once again, if, if this show is in Japan, I think Nakamura will win the title. I have like a moment there, but it's in Pittsburgh. I don't think Nakamura is going to win the title in front of a, a, a piping hot Pittsburgh crowd, pal. I don't know. Um, they might steal the title in Pittsburgh, pal. I don't know. But nonetheless, Kevin, yeah, Rollins gets the win. Pretty good match. And yeah, is there anything else you want to cover with Payback? Any more thoughts? Yeah, just overall, uh, Payback, I think it'll be a solid, you know, B minus, B level show. I think it'll be good. I, I, it'll be a good average show. Will it be better than All In or All Out? Probably not, but it's still going to be WWE putting their best foot forward with a, uh, a relatively unimportant, I don't want to say unimportant, but a relatively less important pay-per-view in comparison to the others. Kevin, do you feel like WWE does best, I mean, wrestling generally is like this, but when you don't have many expectations, like with this show, like we're both, and most people are going in thinking, you know, it's payback, it's a match of, you describe SummerSlam, a card of SummerSlam reject matches, but just generally matches which aren't, you know, this isn't Cody versus Brock. This isn't Reigns and Jey Uso 3. This isn't, like, matches like that. It's matches which are more, you know, not matches we see on Raw, per se, but that's literally what it is. So, Kevin, do you think WWE... I think this could be a sneaky, surprising show. I think a show like SummerSlam had a lot of hype to it. I mean, you weren't as bought in as others with the SummerSlam hype, but I, know I, I was to an extent, and a lot of people were thinking SummerSlam's going to be epic, incredible... And that was sort of, it didn't live up to that hype. It just didn't. This show, I think the well exceed expectations of me quite excellent, to be honest, based on what we're expecting. We're expecting, I am at least a fine show, a, a good match or two, but nothing crazy. I think the show is going to over-deliver. Yeah, I think so too. And yeah, that pretty much does it for our preview. And yeah. we'll talk to you guys on the next one. Peace. Peace.